Good morning, Sylvia. This is day seven of our adventure. We're in Grants, New Mexico, 57 degrees. And today we will end up in Montrose, Colorado. But we're going through Durango, Silverton, the Million Dollar Highway. Hope to see some autumn colors on the aspen trees. It's about a 300 mile day. So I think it's gonna be a good day. Let's get started. There's something you don't see every day. Kids in the back with a pickup truck. Hi. Okay, we're, we're going to get some fuel here. It's been 112 miles since the last filling station. And I've gone longer than that. I think in Nevada once I went over 150 miles. But that's way up there, 112. It's been a while since I've gone that long without fuel. But no big deal when you plan for it. I'm just north of Durango, Colorado, headed towards Silverton, and this is the Pinkerton Hot Springs. It's actually a pretty neat little place. Silverton, Colorado. Dad and I liked this place. Okay, leaving Silverton, going to Ure, 24 miles. This is the Million Dollar Highway. It's the law, all CMV must carry chains. I don't know what a CMV is, but I don't have chains anyway. 
Hopefully I'll get out of here before the snow comes. Mountain passes, steep curves. No, steep drop-offs and steep curves. 23 miles, oh yeah. Good morning, Sylvia. It's 45 degrees. We're in Montrose, Colorado. This evening we'll be in Raton, Raton, R-A-T-O-N, New Mexico. We're going to see some more beautiful Colorado mountain scenery today. So let's get on the road, but I need a biscuit really, really bad. It's been four days since I've had a biscuit. Let's go. Okay, just a word of advice here. If you're riding a motorcycle, you know, don't follow behind 18 wheelers very closely. I, I stay way back. You never know when something's going to fall off or they're going to have a tire explosion or you don't know what they're hauling. It could be cattle. So I had to pass this truck this morning and I knew to stay away from him, but I had to pass him and poop and pee from the cattle were running like a river out of the back of that truck. It was going uphill. So I'm going to have to stop and do a little clean up here of the windshield, uh, anything that was in the airflow, top of my helmet. It's all good. There's none of my face or hands, but yep, I'm going to have to stop and do some cleaning. <laughs> oh, the joys of the American West. So I am in, in the town of Raton, Raton, and this is Raton Pass Motor Inn, and this is my seventh trip across country, and each time I've stayed in mom and pop places two or three times, and I have never ever been disappointed. Now I'm sure that I looked at the ratings when I booked this place, and I'm sure it had you know decent ratings, but wow. Every room has a theme. As you said, mostly southwestern theme, uh, mid-century. But my room is the Reveille room. And let me show you. First of all, you get the old-fashioned key. And I'm in room 11, the Reveille room. And when you walk in, first thing you notice, it's not a typical motel bedspread. Someone put some thought and love into that. It's World War II. Here's Rosie the Riveter. Buy war bonds. They have photos on the desk. And look at this. Private J.M. Yeats. And there's another box. I 
that may may be a parachute i'm not sure here's a uniform with dog tags for your country's sake today for your own sake tomorrow go to the nearest recruiting station of the armed service of your choice of the troops and for the troops the corps of military police united states army build for your navy enlist Carpenters, machinists, electricians, etc. Devil Dog Recruiting Station, <laughs> 506 Fifth Street. Back here where you put your luggage, there's a little sitting area and they, they have books and more photos and where you would hang your clothes. Look here, another uniform. And I just noticed when you go into the bathroom, the curtain has airplanes on it. And over the throne, Texas Rose. And even the shower curtain is a that's, that's some type of jet. But anyway, it's an airplane. Oh, another one. Jeeps. And this gives you an idea how old the motel is. This looks antique. That's probably a gas heater or something from way back in the day. Who knows if it works, but they have a modern convenience air conditioner and the typical microwave refrigerator like I said I stay in two or three mom-and-pop places per trip never had a bad experience but I think I'm gonna to have to up my game and spend more nights in little mom-and-pop places and skip the chain motels this is better than about any place that I've stayed other than Safari Motel in Tucumcari which is also like a mom-and-pop place so as I was coming into town, there was a fence and it said energized, don't touch. And I'm wondering, is that to keep people out or to keep people in? And the owner told me that it's to keep elk and bear out and off the highways. So there you have it.